is another Maddich Monday with ESPN College Football Insider Analyst and BYU National Champion Trevor Maddich, who joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Trevor, what's the best part about beating, not just beating, but dominating a rival? It's not just a win. These are guys that you played high school football with and against. These are guys that you'll probably be living around for the rest of your lives. Your children will likely know each other, at least some of them. And I tell you, to beat a rival is something that can never be taken away, and it is more delicious than any other win. What's it like to lose to a rival, Trevor? I don't know. I'm glad you asked. I have to ask somebody else, though, because we were 8-0 and against Utah and Utah State in the four <laughs> years that I played there. So, But you know what? These Cougars, it's been tough sledding. I mean, Utah's been really good. Utah State has been really good in recent years, and, and I'm just really happy that the Cougars have, have a chance here to, to get such a big win on the road at one of the two biggest rivals. I mean, it's a, it's a feeling that's, that's not as common now as it has been. Who was the MVP of the game, in your opinion? There were a lot of uh, players to choose from. Yeah, there were a lot of players, and I, I, I'd give a co-MVP. I'd say both quarterbacks. I think Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney were close to perfect. I mean, if you look at their numbers, the quarterback rating takes into account not just your passing, but it takes into account running and when you do things. So, you know, in critical moments, do you make a play? Or in critical moments, do you not make a play? 100 is perfect. 50 is average. Baylor Romney, the walk-on, backup, third-string guy, was 91 out of 100. Jaron Hall, the backup, was 98. And that's about the starter, Zach Wilson, in there. I mean, they were close to perfect. And they did it in slightly different ways. But both guys were in firm command. Both guys. The moment wasn't too big for them. You could tell that they knew exactly what they wanted to do, and then they went and did it. And I tell you, it was, a, it was a monument to leadership in the depth of that quarterback room. Yeah, Baylor Romney, Jaron Hall combined 23 for 33 over 400 yards passing, and BYU wins 42-14 going away. That said, Trevor, were you more impressed by the offense or the defense that forced five takeaways? You know, I was more impressed by the offense just because of the way that they did it. The passing game was so efficient. The receivers were monsters. They were beasts. They were getting yards after the catch. Running backs as well, for goodness sake. I mean, the, the way the running backs contributed to the passing game was terrific. But what was most impressive was that banged-up offensive line pounded the Aggies into oblivion. I mean, they kept running right behind center James Empey and just, pounded it straight up the middle. And the thing is, the first time they did it, I thought, well, that was cool. Then they did it again, big game, gouged the Aggie defense. That was cool. Then they did it again, and then again, and then again. And then I started to think, you know, this is more than cool. This is a message to Utah State that they had their fun the last couple of years, and that fun is now over. It was a message to the, to the Cougar players that they're not getting pushed around. They're doing the pushing around. I thought that was fantastic. Now, I love the defense, too, and there's things that they did really, really well, even though they gave up a lot of yards. But I'll tell you, the offense, with the efficiency in the passing game and the downright road-grading dominance of that interior running game was just phenomenal. After the loss, Trevor, to South Florida, BYU made some changes with the coaching staff in terms of who's doing what behind the scenes. Not all of that has been made public, but what has been public has been the difference in the BYU offense. What are you noticing in the last two games since the change in terms of creativity and progression and total offense that BYU has been able to do? Well, the creativity has been fun with the play calling. I mean, the play calling is a bit of a collaborative um, process. And so there's, there's different voices that have been involved, and sometimes that can be a nightmare. But in this game, it was, a, it was a thing of beauty where every time the Utah State defense thought they knew what BYU's tendency would be in a given situation, they came up with something different or they came up with something to take advantage of the tendency and what the defense expected to do something totally unexpected, you know, with flea flickers and just all kinds of crazy stuff that they were doing. I mean, jet sweeps when you normally don't run a jet sweep, things that fooled the defense. Now, you got to execute them, and they did. But I really, I really like that. The other thing I'm seeing, though, is the progression, again, at the quarterback position. The, that makes a big difference because when the quarterbacks are making plays, you get first downs. When you get first downs, you can string together plays. Now you can run counters off of 
the things that are your staple plays. Now you get another first down, you can run even more counters, and it's so much easier to keep the defense off balance from a play-calling standpoint and have momentum, and the quarterbacks are integral to that. I mean, in watching Jaron Hall in the first half, the thing that really stood out was his feet in the pocket. A lot of times quarterbacks will be a little nervous and they'll have what's called happy feet where they're in a clean pocket, but those feet are moving all the time. They're just bouncing all around. They're just like a little jitterbug feet all around. He would stand back in the pocket and if there was no pressure, his feet would not move until he moved his eyes to a different spot. In other words, if a quarterback is looking, say, to the left, his feet and eyes will be aligned that way. If he comes to the center, his feet will follow his eyes to the center, and then if he scans to the right, his feet will follow across. That's normal. But absent that, when he was looking in one direction, Jaron Hall's feet were calm. That tells me his eyes were calm and tells me his heart was calm. And that, to me, is just fantastic. The, uh, the, he would break out and run. He would drop dimes in the passing game. All that stuff was really good physically. But the calmness in the pocket I loved. And then Romney just extended what he did against Boise State. Romney has a knack for lofting that ball high in the air and dropping it in a bucket. And that's so important on certain kinds of vertical routes where it gives the receiver a chance to adjust to the ball to box out the defender and put himself in a position where he can make that catch. Romney is so good at that chemistry with that lofted high ball on those vertical routes. And so those two things stood out about those two quarterbacks. I'm glad you brought up the word calm because not only was Jaron Hall calm and collected and poised, I have joked on more than one occasion that Baylor Romney's resting heart rate is somewhere between 10 and 12, Trevor, because he Probably just so. looks unfazed. Yeah. Let's address the overall quarterback situation at BYU with Zach Wilson, Jaron Hall, and Baylor Romney. How do you see this playing out the rest of the season? Well, I'll tell you, this is a tough one because you've got three guys you can win with. I mean, your third-string walk-on quarterback, Baylor Romney, was a starting quarterback and beat a ranked Boise State team who desperately needed that win. Now, Boise State had injuries to deal with as well, but this is a ranked team that was – had the inside track to a New Year's Six bowl game in the group of five, and Romney led the BYU upset of that team. So, I mean, that's, that's really good. Jared Hall puts everything together with arm and feet. Zach Wilson, when he comes back, if, he's, you know, if he comes back, I think he might have to compete for the starting job. The thing about Wilson is that he's just a baller. I mean, Wilson just has that playground knack to make a play that you don't think is there. It's fantastic, and that's really good. But one thing that he's improving on is doing what we saw Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney do, which is make the plays on schedule that are there to be made on schedule rather than the spectacular baller play. And so I think sitting back and seeing all that will help Zach Wilson become a better quarterback as well. I think that what he'll need to do, though, uh, well, I don't know what the coach's thinking is on this. Here's what my thinking would be. There's a, a, an axiom in football that you don't lose your starting job to an injury. In other words, if you're the starter and you get hurt, when you come back, you're still the starter. That's usually true. But you do lose your starting job to someone who's playing better than you. And as well as Zach Wilson was playing and all the future um, promise that he was showing, I'll tell you this, Jaron Hall is showing that he can throw the ball and he can run with the best of them. And I think that Romney is showing that he can win as well. And this is going to be a really difficult decision for the coaches to make when Wilson comes back. Unless they just say, look, he's the starter, he's healthy now, and he's back in. Because all three guys can win. And how long has it been since BYU has had riches at quarterback so that you've got three guys you're happy to go with and you can't decide which one you want, right? It's been a long time since those kinds of riches have been at that position. Four and four record, uh, four games to go in the regular season, Trevor. Liberty this Saturday. Don't sleep on Idaho State the next week on BYU TV. Uh, never U sleep on Idaho State. Never do or do. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, take a nap. At UMass and then San Diego State, who uh, seven and one and ranked. Do you think BYU runs the table here in these four games? Run the table would be a terrific achievement. Uh, would love to see him do it. Uh, but you're right. That San Diego State is, is ranked right now. And Liberty... Don't, don't sleep on the Flames. They are 6-3. and three. And so those two teams would be tough outs. And if BYU is able to win one of those, it'll be a good accomplishment. If they win them both, 
I mean, it'll be a it won't it'll be a, a cause for celebration. Now, again, you can't sleep on UMass because UMass, you know, has a history of rising up and beating BYU when they're not supposed to. Those you One game, people. it's all good. That still it still happened, didn't it? It still hurts, <laughs> and I wasn't even there. Uh, and Idaho State, you don't sleep on them just because they're probably lumpy, I guess. But Idaho State's <laughs> struggling as well. I mean, their record right now is three and six. So you know, but BYU has shown that that they can rise up and lose to teams that they should beat. So can they sweep? If they do, it would be fantastic. But I do expect them to get to get to at least six wins and the bowl game, and we'll see if they can make that even better. Trevor, we're ready to hang a Mountain West Conference championship banner in Boo. Studio B if BYU beats San Diego State. You cool with that? Absolutely cool with that. Just absolutely cool with that. I miss the I miss the days of the Mountain West. I really do. I mean, there's a lot of advantages for having, uh, for being independent. And I tell you, BYU wouldn't have opportunities like they do in this kind of number to go up and and beat. You know, win at Tennessee, win at Wisconsin. You know, the, the different things they've been able to do because of the number of Power Five schools that they've been able to schedule because they're independent. So I'm not saying independent is not good. I think there's been a lot of great things that have happened because of it. But, man, the Mountain West was so much fun, wasn't it? <laughs> there is fun in conference context. Trevor, it's great to talk to you, man. We appreciate the time as always. All right. Thanks, guys. Trevor Maddich on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.